Hi there everybody and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. In this video we're going to be taking a look at mole calculations and linking them to the Avogadro constant. This allows us to calculate the individual numbers of atoms, molecules or even ions in a sample of a substance. Check the timestamps in the video description if you'd like to go straight to a specific part of this video right now. And if you've missed out on volumes 1 and 2 of our online tutorial series for starting A-level chemistry, well you can just click the eye to the top right hand corner of the screen right now and you'll find the links to the videos there. Otherwise, let's get started. What you can see on screen now are two different equations that effectively tell us the same thing. They are both ways of calculating mole values from a mass of a substance and either its molar mass or its relative molecular mass. Let's start with the second equation and then we'll have a look on the next slide about the differences between these two equations themselves. The second equation uses MR. Now MR, remember, stands for relative molecular mass. And the relative molecular mass of a substance is the sum of all of its relative atomic masses. And the relative atomic masses can be found from the periodic table. For example, the relative atomic masses of hydrogen and oxygen are 1 and 16 respectively. Now because the formula of water is H2O, well the relative molecular mass of H2O is going to be 18, because it's two hydrogens and one oxygen AR value added together. You may not be familiar with RFM, which is actually relative formula mass, but that's what we use for ionic substances, because they aren't molecules or atoms, they are a regular and repeating pattern of oppositely charged ions, and it would really be a bit inaccurate to describe them as having a relative molecular mass in that case. So before we go any further, what's the difference between molar mass and relative mass? Well, the numerical values are actually the same for a particular substance. For example, the molar mass and the relative atomic mass of sodium are both 23.0. It's just about context. The molar mass of sodium is 23.0 grams per mole, and that's because that's the mass of one mole of sodium atoms whereas the relative atomic mass of sodium is 23.0 because that's the average mass of one atom of sodium compared to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. You can see there they've got very different backstories to the origins of the numbers. However, we can use either of them in these mole calculations. We can do either mass divided by molar mass or mass divided by relative atomic or relative molecular mass, it would obviously depend on the context, to get us that mole value. Don't worry about it, don't overthink it, just appreciate you could use either MRs or molar masses in your calculations. Equation introductions out of the way, let's have a look at how we can abbreviate some of our terms in this equation and the units of moles and mass. Well, we can often abbreviate moles to the letter N, so N is for number of moles, and the units of moles are always mole, so that keeps things nice and simple. For mass, we abbreviate that with a lowercase m, and that differentiates it from the capital M that we use for MR or the capital M that we use for molar mass. The units of mass as well are always going to be grams. Now, don't ever get tempted to use kilograms in this calculation. It is always going to be grams for A-level chemistry. Rearranging our equation is also an important skill, and you can see at the top of the screen now we've got moles equals mass divided by MR, which is our original calculation, but then underneath we've got our two rearrangements to make MR and mass the subject. MR equals mass divided by moles, so that'd be a mass value in grams divided by a mole value in mole, and mass equals MR times moles. Personally, I've always learned that mass equals Mr. Moles, and that's a nice way of remembering the equation if you're looking for a little trick. You can also learn the triangle that uses the abbreviations for the individual terms at the bottom of the screen, with mass being the lowercase m at the top, n being the number of moles to the bottom left, and mr being, well, mr. To practice this, what you need to do is select a mass at random, for example, 300 grams, and then select a correct chemical formula. If you're looking for inspiration of what chemical formula you should be using, well, I recommend you check out volume one of our online tutorial series for starting out A-level chemistry, as it's packed full of formulae that we expect you to become very familiar with at the start of the course. For example, in there, you'll find nitric acid is HNO3. So what I could do to calculate my moles is literally just 300 divided by the MR of HNO3, and that will give me the mole value. 
I could then go back timesing the mole value that I've just calculated by the MR to the original mass value. And you could do this for loads of different things from the periodic table and using the different formula you'll find in the volume one tutorial video. When you do an experiment in chemistry, you'll often actually record mass values to two decimal places. So if you want to practice preparing for when you're going to be doing this kind of procedure in your A-level, I recommend you only go for masses that are done to two decimal places. So for example, 300.18 would be a good one to go for in our previous example. Once you've got some practice with the equation, it's likely you're going to want to know what you can do with it next. Well, one of the things we'll study at A-level is how you can use this equation alongside a number called the Avogadro constant. The Avogadro constant has a value of 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And if we take our mole value that we've just calculated and multiply it by the Avogadro constant, what it allows us to do is to find out the individual number of the atoms, molecules, or ions, depending on the context that we have, in our sample of the substance. For example, if I knew the number of moles of sodium atoms, and I was to multiply that mole value by the Avogadro constant, then it would tell me the number of sodium atoms that I have in my sample of moles. If I knew the number of moles of carbon dioxide in a sample, well, if I multiply that mole value by the Avogadro constant, it allows me to understand how many individual molecules there are of carbon dioxide in my sample. So here's an example of that calculation in action. You can see here I'm using water in this scenario. Let's say, for instance, I know I had 0.200 mole of water in a sample, well, if I was to multiply this by the Avogadro constant, which is often given the symbol capital N subscript capital A, then I would get the number of H2O molecules that would be present in my sample. So as you can see, 0.200 times the 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, which is the Avogadro constant, gives me 1.20 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules of water. Now, at A level, we would then take that a little bit further. Since there are two hydrogens per molecule of water, what I could do next is double that quantity and it would tell me how many hydrogen atoms there are in my sample. So that would be 2.40 times 10 to the power of 23. Or what I could have done is multiplied the original value of 1.20 times 10 to the power of 23 by the number of protons in one molecule of H2O. And that would provide me with an estimate of the total number of protons in the entire sample of water. There are lots you can do with this number, so feel free to get adventurous with your calculations. Other examples of this kind of next step with our answer can be found in the video description. That's all we have time for in this starting out A-level chemistry tutorial video. Click the links on screen now to go to other follow-up videos that we have on our channel relating to mole calculations, and also the links are on screen for the previous volumes of this series. Until next time, happy revising!